So I usually try to express my gratitude in the various videos that I make because, you know, really the community that supports this channel is pretty amazing. And I'm really grateful for everybody that comments and likes and shares the videos and everything like that because this has been a pretty big undertaking that I started nearly two years ago making this YouTube channel. It's been really nice just to see a lot of the support that we've gotten and see the channel has grown. And I guess I haven't really actually made a video just to say thanks. Now we published a video a couple of days ago about this fine that I got about five years ago for $25,000 and just the support for that and for you know just my experience has been really pretty overwhelming and, and pretty exciting. One of the things for a lot of people that watched this recently, Lewis Rossman, thank you. You made this video about my video. I never would have expected this. Just doing my thing, making my videos and just speaking to the people that are willing to listen, but then you have this huge audience of you know over a million subscribers and you put this video out there. And a lot of those people end up subscribing to my channel. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. It's very meaningful to me. And I guess with YouTube, it's just allowing me this opportunity to share more what's going on, to share my feelings and experiences and to help kind of bring people more into my world because my life is very much focused and dedicated to this specific cause. So the people that I find that I most connect with are people that also feel similar to me. And I don't always find those people in my community. And the support that's come out for this recent video has really just overwhelmed me with gratitude. I've had this vision for a long time of what electric bikes will be and what my store will be and everything else. And Never really sure exactly how it was gonna work out, but one thing that I really felt that if I was gonna do it, I wanna do it the best that I can and really go hard at it. I'm just grateful to have this place where people share in this similar interest and similar sort of passion as me, and that's pretty cool. So I think that in future videos, I wanna kinda of share a little bit more of my personal experiences and really just bring a little bit more of my life into this channel as opposed to just talking about bikes. It seems like there might be some level of interest in that. You could let me know. But today I wanted to just say thanks. And I also just wanted to read some of the comments and just express some of the feelings that I have when I see some of these comments because I do my best to express these feelings in my replies, but I don't know that I'm always capable of really expressing the emotions I feel in that way. So I figured making this video could perhaps give you a better impression of that. So I'm gonna read a couple and you know, give my feedback there and look forward to knowing what you guys think. So the first one is from Gout, 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 Holman, Goat. It's like Holt, Holt Couture, Goat, Holman, Gauta. All right, this is not going quite as smoothly as we hoped. So <laughs> this is a comment. I'm a Norwegian living in Oslo, Norway. I love that you don't just make videos about your e-bikes, but also videos like this with stories and opinions about the revolution of e-bikes and micro mobility. Keep up the good work. If I ever go to New York, I'm gonna find your store. That's pretty cool. I've gotten some other similar sort of things like that. And I know a lot of times people like all over the world, like watch some of our bike reviews and that sort of thing. And it helped them, you know, make the decision on what bike they want to purchase. But really I'm mostly interested in just like learning from you guys. It's pretty cool to be able to learn from places that are perhaps a little bit more mature in some of their bike infrastructure and the culture around cycling. Another one, Chris, you're breaking barriers and filling the gaps. As a fellow disabled veteran and former bike snob, the value you're adding to the grassroots level can't be underestimated. While I applaud advocacy groups, you are literally taking it to the streets and getting people on bikes. That is powerful and long lasting. It builds community and a movement with action instead of just talk. Major hat tip, Jeff Dibble. Wow. I, I don't know, I mean, I think sometimes I can feel that I'm just like going at this alone. I mean, I got my team and I got our customers and like, it's really cool to like participate, but like a lot of times I just get this idea in my head and I just go for it. I would say 10 years, I mean, we started this thing 10 years ago, but it's really probably been the last like six years since I was like, oh, this is a transportation solution. Oh, this is actually like the opposite of the stuff that I was doing in Iraq. This is the stuff that I wanna really get behind. So to know that there's like other people that like are really on board with this with me, it's, it's a really big deal. This next one I really like and this reflection I had on this ticket and I had spoken to somebody in the city and they said, don't worry, it's taken care of. This guy said, sounds like you got a call from the mafia, CDMC, yeah. Uh, and sometimes that's just the way that New York is. I mean, I haven't really had that experience so much outside of New York, 
But my general feeling is like the bureaucracy of New York, sometimes you just kind of have to take care of things. Like sometimes you have to go outside the lines to make it happen. I'm grateful that some people are willing to do that sometimes because without that, I don't know that we'd make too much progress in New York, to be honest. Gary Daytona says, people who are groundbreakers are often considered crackpots and troublemakers. Yeah, I've been called that. That's just the way it is. And it's nice to know that people such as yourself are willing to put up with the trouble and criticism to move the e-bike industry forward. Kudos, man. Good on you. Thank you, Gary. Trouble and criticism, definitely had plenty of experiences with that and continue to, but it's definitely getting a lot less, so I appreciate that. Either that or just finding it easier to handle that stuff, so. The Gita guy, Gita, Gita guy. Gita guy, Gita guy. He says, bravo for sticking to your guns and taking the gamble early on. Just can't imagine what kind of seat you're, oh. Wait, how'd this one get in here? <laughs> Do you really want me to read this? Yes. <laughs> Just can't imagine what kind of seat your e-bike has that allows you to ride in comfort with those enormous... <laughs> Thanks for taking on the big city. All right. Now, we've had this discussion, and I think there's a lot of these, like, HR challenges that we have that come up with your comments. I, I appreciate them. They definitely make us laugh, but, like, I think we need to have a... HR person like here on call all the time she says it that I can say that but I am not going there any like legal counsel want to tell me if I'm allowed to talk about this stuff I don't think that I'm supposed to I'm gonna just leave that one for now but thanks Keita guy guess I use a normal saddle Keith Newberry I was wondering who this guy was because he said I have to admit I had you pegged wrong Thank you for being an awesome human and teaching me always to be humble and not go by first impressions. Keith, I don't know what you had me pegged as, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and comment and uh, give me some feedback. I, I really appreciate it. Being humble and not going by first impressions is a big deal and we could all learn from that experience. So Candace M, amazing story and yeah, yeah. I don't know that I can say it like this. Amazing story and yeah, I am, I guess, what is, is that Canadian? Yeah? Candace, are you Canadian? Amazing story, and yeah, I am surprised that you are not in jail, but glad you're still in business. Keep up the great work. Yeah, Candace, I'm glad that I'm not in jail either. I kind of thought that some of these things might get me in some pretty hot trouble. I didn't think they would get me in jail. Maybe some financial trouble, but, but yeah, but those things can always be solved, so. Alan Hillman, love the hat. Hope you sell them, good promotion. I agree, that's the plan. However, it's one of those things on my long list of to-dos and it hasn't risen up quite high enough. I'm also looking for some support. So if any of you guys know somebody that's like really good with apparel, but I don't want just like, you know, the random hat off the shelf and put your logo on it. This thing has been custom made and uh, the source that I was working with, I'm not working with them anymore, but I'm looking for somebody. So if you guys know somebody or if you want to help with that, shoot me an email. So Skip Davis says something and he might know something that you guys don't. I think I know what you're talking about, Skip. He says that I think that you'll find that bikes that are UL2849 listed will have a much better time in NYC. Been hearing some rumors about this topic and um, I don't know, I can't comment too much on it. I don't know what I'm supposed to know or what I'm not supposed to know, but basically it sounds like there might be some more like safety regulations come to New York in light of some of the fires that happen in relation to e-bike batteries. That's all I'll say on this thing for right now, but uh, I don't know if that's what you're talking about, Skip, but uh, I appreciate it and thanks for the tip. Now, this comment is from one of my friends in the UK that I haven't met yet, but um, I think I can consider him a friend at this point. He always writes these lengthy comments and he's really pretty good with words, I guess you could say. He wrote, Chris, this is a great video and you should feel justifiably proud of yourself for making a stand of something you believe in. I do feel proud. Furthermore, you deserve much kudos for your part in clarifying the legal standing of e-bikes in NYC. Maybe we can promote you as Daniel Boone, pioneer of e-bikes who fearlessly opened up the USA to a brave new era of pollution-free travel. If we got Disney interested, we can make a fortune from the film rights. Actually, one of my favorite movies is about Walt Disney and his story and everything like that and seeing the trials and tribulations that he went through to actually build Disney to what it is. It's pretty amazing. Please rest assured, any story concerning yourself and e-bikes, but especially concerning the breathtaking young lady sitting right here on her cell phone. Please, 
Please rest assured, any story concerning yourself and e-bikes, but especially concerning the breathtaking young lady, will be more than welcomed by your fan base. We are your willing audience. P.S. 25000 for trying to save the world? No wonder why you moved to California. Keyboard commando. And in case you're wondering who he's talking about is Asia. Plenty of people have made comments about Tara as well, but I don't, he's got a special liking for Asia. Oh, this is an HR problem, huh? Okay. If it's something I do, it's a, okay. No problem. I would like to know your real name, Keyboard Commando, though, because I still haven't gotten it after all these comments. So let me know. You can message me if it's easier. All right. How about this guy, Does Shorts? I guess this guy, uh, Louis Rossman, he's got a lot of real funny guys on his channel because I think we've gotten a particular influx of people making funny comments. So I appreciate that. I hope you guys stick around. I hope that, you know, you, we can make this channel a little bit more entertaining. I don't know. But this guy does, sh does shorts, says NYC. Like as in like this is what NYC says. E-bikes are dangerous and illegal. COVID, hold my beer. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the reality. I mean, we were moving in the right direction with electric bikes and that sort of thing, but certainly like COVID has really moved this to the next level. And uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting the people that have been willing to accept and be interested in electric bikes after all this craziness of COVID in the city these days. Now this next comment is a bit controversial and a friend of mine, Zach Crapful, did a TED talk on this topic as well, saying that basically electric bikes are more efficient than traditional bikes when you consider the food and such that you have to consume to power a traditional bicycle and the means by which that food has to travel, etc. So he said, an e-bike is the most efficient vehicle in the world, even more efficient than a normal bike or walking since walking or cycling 20 miles would cost you as a person much energy. You get that energy by eating and to eat, you need to make food to make that food, you need more energy than your e-bike would have used. So cycling 20 miles with an e-bike creates less CO2 than cycling 20 miles yourself. Rowan Brokman. Brokman? Hope that I pronounced that right. Actually, my friend Zach expanded this a bit further that if you were to eat local produce that you grew yourself, that it doesn't have to transport and you're eating really uh, high efficient diet, etc., that you could potentially be as efficient as electric bike, but it's a lot easier to be more efficient with the electric bike, particularly if you're using power made by solar and different things like that. So then I get some comments that are not always so easy to understand. Like somebody said, more power to your elbow. I had to actually look that up. And apparently it's like a British saying where basically it's like saying like you're using some elbow grease and basically like getting some more power to that to really keep on doing what you're doing and saying that you support that. I appreciate that. I guess really, I'm not gonna read any of those rude comments, but you know, there's there's certain plenty of them out there and those are okay. I mean, it's been kind of cool. Uh, I feel like I've learned to grow through this experience. It's not always so easy. Sometimes I wanna like react when somebody makes negative comments, but I think I've learned to just go with it and, and recognize like where people are coming from and that you know, they might not understand where I'm coming from or whatever the case may be. That's okay. And you know, a lot of people just say like New York sucks and that I should move. And I actually technically did. That's why I set up this shop in California. That's where I am here now. I still have the store in New York and I kind of split my time between the two and I plan to have some additional stores in the future, probably likely. I still love New York. I was born and raised in New York. New York is still home to me, even though I live in California. I hope people don't take offense to it. If you do, sorry, whatever, I don't care, honestly. New York is an interesting place. I mean, it's a challenging place to do business, that's for sure. But the reality is the experiences I've had in New York have made me stronger and really have prepared me for the, a lot of the challenges that I've encountered. I mean, certainly my military experience has prepared me for a lot of that stuff as well. And I guess the combination of those things. So in closing, I just wanna say thank you for your support. Thank you for connecting with me and this channel and really helping to build this community. I look forward to sharing more of these personal perspectives in the future. I hope that we can together kind of build more awareness and understanding for electric bikes and biking for transportation. As for me, this is a really important mission of mine, and I hope that you guys will join me and help me to further it along. So I look forward to seeing you in a future video, and uh, see you soon.